sparking a heated debate, so joining me now to talk about it is Lucy Caldwell, the Communications Director at the Caldwell Institute, also Dr. Andrew Von Eschenbach, the former FDA Commissioner, David Kroll, the contributor to Forbes.com, where he writes about drug development, and CNN's very own Elizabeth Cohen, the author of The Empowered Patient. Good evening to all of you. David Kroll, start with you first. When, when we hear cases, you know, like Jake Collier's, it seems like a, a, to make a lot of sense to give his father at least the option to ask for a drug in the late stages of testing. I mean, that, that could help save his, his son's life. Is that worth it? Well, I think, I think we have to step back for a second, Don, and just realize that the reason that we have a drug approval process is so that we get drugs to people who need them as quickly as possible while also having a good measure of the relative safety of the drug uh, in the particular setting where it's going to be used. So yes. we do take into account when we're developing these kinds of drugs that people are in sort of terminal, life-threatening situations. Uh, and so a lot of times we really don't know until the drug gets almost all the way up to approval just how effective it's going to be. So you don't think he should get that option until it gets almost up until approval? Well, I mean, so phase one trials don't even tell you anything about effectiveness. Phase one trials simply are there to determine safety. Yeah. Uh, it's the phase I, I, two I understand that, trials that, that are... Yeah, I understand that. I don't want to get right. too, in the, too in the weeds here, but uh, just to answer my question, you, you don't think that he should have that option until it's that late in the game when it, when it comes to drugs? Oh, no, 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 I believe that he should have the option, but, I, but I, we already have a system for that. We okay. have, the FDA has a compassionate use provision. We don't. Provision. <laughs> Go ahead, Lucy. <laughs> We don't have a system at all in place, and the reason that the Goldwater Institute designed the Right to Try initiative is that we have a million Americans dying of terminal illness every year, and the vast majority of them are locked out of accessing these drugs. Is, am I saying that there's a magical cure for every disease out there? Absolutely not. But there are a lot of promising drugs that are in trials that families like Jake's want to access, and only 3% of the sickest patients, by and large, are even able to get into the clinical trials. So there is not a system in place. The system is broken, and that's what Right to Try is going to change. No. Yeah, there, there is a system. It, Don, gone. go I mean, ahead, there Elizabeth. Is a, there, there is a system, but I think the problem is the system yeah. does not work very well. The system is laid out. There's, you know, it's, it's all there in black and white. But when you go to change.org and you Absolutely. see patient after patient after patient looking for these drugs and being told no, you, you just know that something's just not quite working. I interviewed a man whose 15-year-old daughter has cancer in her brain, abdomen, pancreas, lungs, bones, and, and even more places, went to three major drug companies, told no by all three of them over and over again. Yeah, but, but it's, uh, yeah. I, I understand that, but then it's, so, usually people, though, they, drug companies don't like to give patients drugs because they say usually people, you know, they're, they're so far gone that the drugs can't really help them once they're at the phase that you're talking about, Elizabeth. That's right, th and that's, that's true. That is a problem. But that is a, that is a problem. And so drug companies aren't going to like it if someone goes on social media, makes a big deal out of this, then they get the drug and then they die, especially right. if it's a child. That is a PR nightmare. But, because they're not part of the control. The control. Go ahead, Dr. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, the point is that we all want early access, expanded access to these drugs. That's not the issue. And it is true that we have a problem, but we have to understand that problem before we embark upon a solution. You asked a little earlier, is there potential harm uh, to the legislation? The real question is, is it really going to fix and solve the problem? And the answer is no, because one, there is the opportunity for expanded access. The FDA has processes and procedures that have been in place. In 2013, there were almost 1,000 applications for exactly. expanded access. There are fewer I think there were only that, two that were rejected. All right, go ahead, Lucy. So what's the problem? Let's the put problem that into perspective. Let's, is let's, let's, downstream. Let's put that into perspective. The, the FDA loves to talk about its 99% approval rating, but let's just talk about cancer. Half a million Americans get diagnosed with cancer every year, and 40% of them try to get into clinical trials. That's about 200,000 people. Uh, the vast majority of them are not allowed in. Does anyone really think that, even just focusing on cancer, that only 1,000 of them try to pursue it? No. They well, are the locked out of the system. The FDA that's not, that's locks not them out the at every stage. Let, this and, let, and, let him respond. That's what not ends expanded up happening, access. I just <laughs> let him respond. Go that, ahead, doctor. That is expanded access. That's
Dr. Yeah, I mean, I think people's I think access to clinical oh, yeah, get, get trials is not the issue. Say again, Dr. Eschenbach. I, I think that I just was with a 32-year-old Lucy, 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 hold had on. Osteosarcoma. Lucy, Lucy, hang okay. on. Look, Let there, him finish. There's, there's a lot, Lucy, there's a lot of emotion in the issue that you're putting on the table. There's no question about that. But we have to be rational and reasonable about this. The question that is at issue here is there are desperate patients who need and want access to experimental therapies. And what we need is to do that rationally and reasonably. One, to protect Absolutely. those patients, but also to make sure that they are getting the right thing in the right way. So it's important to have an agency like FDA that sets those kinds of principles and guidelines in place. The problem is not with the FDA. You already alluded to the fact that what happens more often is the problem rests with the sponsor the company, the person who, or, or whoever owns the drug, not being or not willing to be able to provide that drug for those circumstances. Let's focus on that. Let's okay. fix that problem. And this legislation does not do okay, that. Okay, stand by, Wait, everyone. Well, go, David and then, and then Elizabeth. David, go ahead. Yeah, what I was going to say is that one, one also, also has to remember that giving unfettered access to experimental therapeutics could potentially damage uh, the opportunity of other patients to be able to get access to that drug when it's approved. If there are very serious uh, side effects that are detected with experimental use of drugs, and there's a huge social media campaign around that patient getting the drug, if that patient's death is hastened, that could potentially create That's a firestorm that might here. influence FDA's approval of that drug. Yeah, and of right, course, and well, quickly, Elizabeth, go ahead. You know, one reason That's why the FDA, right. one reason why drug companies don't like to take on compassionate use patients is that, if, as our Kaplan and others have said, if something goes wrong, the FDA is going to say, "Wait a second, are we sure we want to approve this drug? Look what happened to this compassionate use patient." So the experts that I've talked to about but this said, I, "Look, I, we need to get into a room I, together, I, smart people, and figure out ways that the FDA." can yes. sort of address this. The FDA has to be involved. That is what drug exactly. company executives and others have said to me. But you can't, they have but to you be you can't make companies okay. do something. Very well said. That's going to be, well That's gonna have to be the last I, word, I have to take unfortunately. Issue. unfortunately. I have to take issue. Thank you. Everybody's very passionate about that. When we come right back, um, we'll be back in a moment. Introducing the first mattress made with cooling gel foam from top to bottom for a difference you can feel. Optimum by Sealy Posturepedic. This Memorial Day, save up to $300 on select Optimum sleep sets. What has she been named? Dido Bell Lindsay. She takes your name. I am not ashamed. Based on an extraordinary true story. Why do you not dine with your family ever? Because that is not correct. The New York Times calls Belle as irresistible as it is moving. I love her! You can't love her!